is Gara Kemsky. I'm uh, from New York City. I'm the current US chess champion. I'm Hikaru Nakura. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm the number one ranked chess player in the US. I'm Levon Aronian. I'm from Armenia, and I'm number two ranked player in the world. I'm uh, Magnus Carlsen. Uh, I'm from Norway, and I'm ranked as number one in the world. Y you know, uh, oh, we're trying to promote our game, so I think everybody knows that it's the uh, first tournament of such kind in the United States uh, for a long time. So I think everybody's going to do their best. Everybody is going to try to entertain the public and play combative chess. And it's very prestigious. And of course, it's the, the honor of the United States at stake. So we have to perform well. So the popularity of chess in certain places is, um, it's very, is very high. But for me, it's, it's all about America. And um, for whatever reason, it doesn't seem like there's the level of popularity at the moment. And um, I'm just hoping that whether it's me, whether it's Kamsky, whether it's players like Carlson or Ronian, that um, in some way we can raise the profile. I, I think chess has the appeal of something interesting, something deep. And uh, that's our advantage. And I think that's going to attract uh, people of America. It's really quite nice to see that there are uh, there is an elite tournament here. And again, this tournament is the first among uh, many firsts that organize uh, created here in St. Louis. The St. Louis is the chess capital of the U.S. It's only fitting that you guys have here the best tournament. Actually, I can call myself uh, a representative of the capital of chess, Yerevan, because we have so many uh, clubs and so many people. But I feel tension because I feel that the city of St. Louis is slowly trying to compete with us. <laughs> I, I know that um, the US Championship has, has been here for, um, for a few years. Uh, I've been following it uh, online, both, both the games and, and the commentary, and uh, I've heard uh, only, only positive, positive things uh, about, about it, and that's part of the reason why I was eager to come here myself. I think I would have to say that I'm looking forward to playing Carlson the most. Um, we've played many times before. Most people know I don't have a good score against him, so uh, it's a chance to kind of change things, and uh, I'm, you know, I'm just going to do my best. Yeah, I played uh, played Kamsky, um twice in the World Cup, 2005, 2007. And he's extremely tough, fights till the end uh, every time, and. Um, and I think I have some of the same qualities, and, and that's why our games are usually quite interesting. Every player in the world has a unique style, and Levon is one of the most original players you can ever meet. You know, he, his understanding of chess, uh, his personality, they're all very unique. I think my usual something adventures on the borders of something crazy. <laughs> Obviously, I enter every tournament with, with a mindset that if everything goes according to plan, I, I, I should have a very good chance of winning. You know, I'm going to do really well. That's what I feel. But I don't know how well. <laughs> <laughs> I just only play for honor, for glory, and, uh, you know, for chess, for the sake of chess. It will definitely not be easy, and um, I, I look forward to it. We all know each other for many years now, played each other so many games. So um, it will be intense, it will be interesting and hopefully the fans will be glad. The world will be watching St. Louis. The best in the U.S. The best in the world. Only one will be king. The Singfield Cup. Hi folks, John Cordisco back again with another great chess video. This is a great chess game right here. This is a first class Grandmaster game. 
is between a Carl Nakamura, my buddy from the United States, as white, rated 27.72, and Gatakamsky, also from the United States, as black, rated 27.41. Hikaru and Gata are number one and two in the United States. This is part of the Singfield Cup. This is round two. The other two players in this tournament are Levon Aronian, number two in the world, and Magnus Carlsen, number one in the world, current world champion challenger to the Vishyanan this fall. That game ended in a draw, even though it was a good game. This is a first-class Grandmaster game and I watched it on DVR live those of you can see some of the videos go to uschesschamps.com that's uschesschamps.com it's a great game let's get started a Carl goes e4 c5 now that tells me right away e4 a Carl's going for it and c5 by Gatakamsky tells me he's going for it. So this is going to be a great game already. Not the normal D4 or E4, E5. They're going right. It's going to be a con Sicilian. E6, D4, C takes, Knight takes, A6. Pretty typical stuff. Knight to C3. B5. Kind of an offbeat. Sicilian uh, the idea obviously is the bishop can come here and the bishop's got rain here bishop to d3 reinforcing the e4 pawn bishop b7 castles knight takes bishop takes rook d1 that does a couple of things he's over protecting the pawn here but that rook is bearing right down on his king. And as you can see, these three pieces aren't developed at all. And that's the drawback sometimes in the Sicilian is your king side is not so developed. Queen to b8, pretty common. He's trying to control this, the dark squares on this diagonal with the queen there. Plus it helps support any queen side pushes that it does. A4, try to break up that queen side a little bit. He just pushes the knight. The knight goes to d5. Now, that looks like that knight is for free, but it's not. If pawn takes, pawn takes with check. Forcing probably the bishop to go here, and then pawn takes. And black's pretty exposed. Bishop to d7. That pin is still there. Right now, for whatever it's worth, white's about a half a pawn up, which means it's even. Queen h5, I like that a lot. It guards the h pawn here from the double attack. And it guards here. Beautiful. Knight d7. Knight takes. Bishop takes. Now, if you notice, the king is still there in the center of the board. It hasn't moved yet. It's going to stay there, too. Unfortunately, forgot a b3. I was a little surprised at that move, actually. But Carl's just shoring up his queen side. And it's a double, double, I call it, bishop ending. All four bishops and all four rooks. So it can, can get very complicated. I think interesting might have been e5. Cutting off the queen. The queen's guarding the pawn here. And maybe later, down the road, pawn here or bishop here. Just to put the cramp on black. It would have won g6, queen, bishop f8. After b3, a5. I think in retrospect, castling probably would have been better. That's probably what I would have done. After b3, a5. Looks like black's just shoring up. 
is queenside a little bit here. Bishop to b2. And as you can see, white needs to go e5 just to cramp down white. Or excuse me, cramp down black. Bishop there to stop it. As you can see, the queen and the bishop are guarding that space. Bishop takes. Now, looks tough for black here. He's on castle. He's got double pawns. This pawn is isolated and weak. But it's it's tough. There's no dark squared bishop. So the king's got a pretty good hiding space here. And all these pawns around the king, when he gets to e7, that's pretty stable uh, protection. We're going to see how it works out. e5. Right off the shoot. Wants to start breaking up those pawns. Rook to g8. g3. Rook to g5. Now, a curl went queen to h6, which I like a lot. This square right here is vulnerable. And if a queen can get there, it'll be a big pain in the behind for black. I think... If he had taken the pawn on h7, rook takes, or f takes, h4, rook to g4, queen to h5. And I, I like white in this a lot. After queen to h6, rook takes pawn, queen takes pawn. Now that queen's in a good spot. And if you notice, it can't be chased off. This rook can't come here because the bishop's guarding that square. This is a good bishop right here. And to be honest with you, black's got a good bishop too right here. And you're looking at some queen maneuvers, and they're both powerful bishops. But it's the black squares that, black, that white needs to dominate here if he's going to make any headway with black. Rook, rook to h5. Now that seems like a weird move. That rook is out in the middle of nowhere. But the odd part is, white can't attack it. Unless, of course, he totally loses his senses and goes pawn here. The queen can't go here or here to attack it. The queen can't go here to attack it. The queen can't go here to attack it. The queen can't go here to attack it. This bishop can't attack it either. So that rook's in a good spot. It's holding down that h7 pawn temporarily, which is holding together black's position until he can get it together. Bishop to e4. Good move. But I think Kamsky makes the right move here. He needs to get rid of that queen. Queen to d8. Now they probably could have went into an ending. White could have taken. Black retakes. White takes. Pawn here. He's up a pawn. Or you shouldn't say he's, their pawns are even, but it's it's a it's a pretty boring endgame, and I don't think really Akara was interested in that. Queen to f3. Now of course, he's attacking the bishop, and the queen ta retakes, taking up the pawn. So he has to do something. Rook to c5. That rook's getting a lot of action. Now is doing double duty. It's guarding this square, and it's also attacking the c2 pawn. That's a good move. Queen to e3. A Carl's not interested. He's going right after the rook. If bishop had taken, rook takes, rook to e4, rook a to c8. It's maybe a three-quarter pawn advantage for white. But his pain in the behind is going to be this pawn because it's backwards. And he's going to have to have all his forces to defend it in the end. And I don't think really a Carl was interested in that, and I wouldn't have been either. Queen to e7 to guard the rook. Bishop takes the pawn. This was a gamble on a Carl's part. And you're going to see that bishop could have got very well hemmed in. Very well hemmed in. And if you're wondering why the rook doesn't take the pawn here, this bishop is guarding it. So what he does right away, 
He blocks in the bishop. Now this pawn's up for grabs. He checks. King moves. Then he guards the pawn. At this point in the video, I want to thank everyone. My video from the first round of the Singfield Cup 2013. I received the most views of any video I've ever done. And I received them all in one day. I'm really happy that my videos are starting to be watched around the world. And I thank everyone that watched them and commented. I personally appreciate it. It kind of makes the time and effort of doing these worthwhile when I know people are getting something out of it. King to c7. He gets his king out. Bishop h5. He's trying to get that bishop out of there. Frankly, I don't blame him. e5. Now, this is where Kamsky sees he's not going to win this game. He might even lose it if the way things go. And Nakamura is starting to get in a very severe time trouble at this point. We're on move 27. And I believe Nakamura had maybe 20, 22 minutes left for 13 moves, give or take. And this was his chance to complicate things. This position is incredibly complicated. It doesn't look it, but it is. We've got double rooks, four rooks, and two same color bishops. And it's it's horrendous trying to make this out. F4. Our Carl goes right out to shoot after it. As you can see, it's going to start getting tough for White if he doesn't do that. That's more of a de defensive move than it is an offensive move, to be honest with you. Now, what he could have done, c3, f4, g takes, b takes, rook takes, queen to g7, check. King to f1, rook takes. Queen takes, queen to g2, check. King to e2, f takes, queen checks, and queen takes f4. That's crazy. <laughs> That's insane. And this is what these guys had to figure out, especially with Carl, who's got less than a minute of move in this complicated position. Kamsky, on the other hand, had quite a bit of time, not a ton, but quite a bit more. After f4, queen to d6. Honestly, that's even the computer suggested move. I really don't care for that. I know he wants to bring the rook around. But his problem is, he can't move this rook anywhere. And once he moves this rook, the queen infiltrates. He's going to have to start wasting a lot of time here. Rook to f1. Damn good move. Well done by Carl. F takes doesn't really do much. Because after queen to d5, bishop, queen takes, queen takes, it's two pawns for a piece. Big deal. White's doomed. Rook to f1 was the great move and exactly the right move. E takes, queen takes. Now this is, Sp I almost said Spassky again. This is Kamsky's opportunity here. When a Carl took the pawn on f4. To create queens and go into an ending. That wasn't really that beneficial to him. But I think it was worth exploring. Because at this point, it's 0.00, .00 on the computer. But Kamsky, being the fighter that he is, sees Nakamura only has maybe a minute. I think it's like two and a half minutes for the next ten moves. Now, granted, I didn't say this at the beginning. Each move has a 30-second increment. That means every time you move, 30 seconds is added to the time when you push your clock. So it's not a straight two minutes, two and a half minutes. So Carl has to make 10 moves. He'll get 30 seconds each, which is another five minutes. But even still, in a complicated position like this, and, and Kamsky did exactly what you were supposed to do. He had didn't have a ton of time. He had a lot more than a Carl. And those of you out there that are beginners and your opponent is way down on time, don't blitz. Don't move fast. Use your time. 
it'll be way to your advantage you'll find the best move which will cause your opponent to even think harder which will waste more time and it snowballs do not blitz somebody if they're behind on time use your time bishop to e4 he's piling up on the c2 pawn and I'll tell you the truth now Carl's blitzing out these moves for those of you who don't know Carl Nakamura from the United States he is one of the best blitz players in the world some think he is the best on the internet chess club when they played bullet chess which is one minute chess my understanding is Akaro Nakamura had the highest rating of any human ever on the history of the site I don't know if that's still true or not so this guy can play blitz when he wants to now he'd really not be in that spot but he certainly can do it and now Akaro decides I'm not going to trade queens. I'm going for the win. Queen to f2. Beautiful move. It does a lot of things. It freezes this rook and this rook because of this queen infiltrating, which could cause all kinds of havoc later. Rook to c3. That's a damn good spot for that rook. Reason being that there's no dark squared bishop to chase him off. And that controls a lot of key squares here. Bishop to e2, king to b7. I know he had to do it to guard this square from the queen coming in, but I think he wasted a really good tempo. Worth considering was queen to h6. After king to b7, now those of you keeping track, white is still up a pawn. If he can somehow trade down a good a good attack, this H pawn is going to run the board. Rook C to D1. Excellent. Excellent. Keep the pressure on. Now Carl's got seven moves left, and he's got about a minute and a half. And slowly but surely, Kamsky's using up his time. He's not in time trouble, but he used a lot of his advantage already to get this far. And Carl is finding the right moves darn near inst instantly queen to e6 bishop to c4 excellent move that's a really good spot for that bishop it hems in this rook attacks the queen and just reinforces everything here beautiful beautiful stuff and as you can see of course the queen's guarding the c2 pawn which was the pain in white's position d5 He's going for it. Now, this is a move that Carl found. The computer also suggests this move. With a minute left, a minute, ten seconds left, with seven, excuse me, six moves to go against Gatikamski, and you're playing in the highest rated tournament in the history of the United States between those four players, against your main rival in the United States, You've already got one win under your belt. You need this win desperately. Those of you who look at the chessboard now, what would you play? Pause the video, and what would you play as white? It's a damn good move. And to find it in that kind of time pressure, i got to give it to Akaro. I know I'm a big fan of his, but even if you're not, you've got to give him this one. And the move is queen to c5, sacrificing a piece. He can't take. I can't go through the scenario with you right now, but believe me, if pawn takes bishop, he gets mated. Rook to d8. He gave up this pawn. Just gave it up. I think queen to c6 might have been better. He's going to end up losing this pawn in the end, but... Queen takes, oops, oh, excuse me, lost my place here, give me a moment. Queen takes a5, and this is where Kamsky stumbles, just stumbles. You know he can't take here now, because of 
either rook takes or more than likely queen takes. He takes the pawn. Rook takes c2. He kind of lost his nerve on that one. Consider the alternatives. Queen to b6 check. Queen takes. King takes. If you're looking at his position now, it's a disaster. The clock is ticking. A Carl's down to a minute. And a Carl finds the move. The move that saves him. Because what's going to happen here, if you're looking at it, Rook checks, King here, Rook takes mate. He's facing mate. Only one move to save him. Rook to f2. And that's where black is doomed. Three moves left with about a minute left on his clock. I think he was down to some seconds there at the end. He finds the move. What would happen if he didn't take that? If he went queen takes d8. Rook checks. King to h1. Rook takes. Rook f3. Bishop takes. Mate. That free rook wasn't so free. Rook to f2 saves everything. Rook takes. Now everybody would play. Well, I'll just take back with the queen. Absolutely not. Queen takes. The score right now is about three and a half points up for white. If he had taken with a king, check, queen takes, king takes, you're a pawn up in an end game, but it's this one's going to be a little bit tougher. White should probably win it. Now, Carl's a great end game player, especially rooks and pawns, but who wants to go through that if you don't have to? After queen takes d8, rook to g2, check, king to f1, rook to b2. Now, I wondered myself, until I analyzed this, what would happen if he had taken the h-pawn? Bishop checks. Bishop takes. Queen takes. Rook takes. And to tell you the truth, that's a doomed ending for, for black. If rook had taken, bishop checks, king to g1, queen to e1 check, bishop to f1, queen takes f1, king takes, queen mates. White gets mated. Now, Carl's got to figure all this out in the minute that he has left. If rook had taken, queen, mate. So there is a mate in the air. A Carl has to be careful, but he finds the moves. Bishop takes, bishop takes, this simplifies it down. Queen takes, queen takes, rook takes. Got a Kamsky, former world champion challenger, current U.S. champion, resigns. This was a hell of a game. And there's a lot at stake for these guys. They're playing on their home turf. Uh, Carl Nakamura, who doesn't have a very good record against Magnus Carlsen, is playing him in round three the next round. Magnus drew today and beat Kamsky in a really good game. It was a video I did on it. And thank you for all the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of views that I've gotten. The most I've ever gotten in any video was round one of this tournament when Carlson beat Kamsky. Kamsky goes down again. I felt bad for him because God is a hell of a player. But a Carl, he stuck with it. His calculation skills and that kind of speed are amazing. I think, frankly, what happened in this one, a Carl just wanted it more. And that's what happens sometimes. It's nobody's fault. And that's the way it is. Anyway, folks, that's the video. If the first two rounds are any indication how great these games are going to be, we got a hell of a tournament coming. It's going to be six rounds, four more rounds. They're going to play around tomorrow, Wednesday. Then I believe Thursday is a rest day. 
Then I believe they play Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'm not sure. To double check on the days and times of the rounds, go to uschesschamps.com. That's uschesschamps.com. It'll give you all the information on the tournament, and maybe even it should have some videos of the first two rounds and some interviews. Make some kind of neat stuff too. The meet and greet they had. My understanding was for the autograph on the boards and the pictures you could buy, the line was actually around the block at the St. Louis Chess Club and Scholastic Center. Amazing stuff. As an American and a guy that loves chess, I just thought it was great. Can you imagine around the block for autographs and a meet and greet? Wow. Maybe in 10 years we'll be like Eastern Europe and we'll really start giving these guys the recognition and I think the money they deserve. Anyway, folks, I want you to remember if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. And I hope to see all of you in the next video. I want to personally thank the several dozen new subscribers that I've gotten in the last couple of weeks. Thank you very much. It kind of gives me a little incentive to do more videos, which I appreciate. And those of you that haven't subscribed, please do. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.